Welcome, I'm Gorm of Gormworks. Tonight, we're gonna to address some of the things that went wrong last time when we took this thing for a shakedown drive. The starter that gave up at the gas station because it was heat soaked and blew up a 250 amp AMG fuse. I'll show you what we do to fix that and how we have to accommodate that. I'll show you how we make the temperature gauge move left and right with the correct parts now that we know what needed to be fixed and some more stuff. You'll just have to pay attention and see what happens. Buckle in, let's get to work. Today, let's change the starter. To start, always disconnect the battery. Most cars don't have this, but I can do that. Most of the time, take a wrench, unhook one of the cables, set it off to the side. While I've got everything out of the way, let me show you some electrical things because we're also going to update the two relays on the fan. So in my setup, I had a 40 amp fuse going to a feed wire that goes over to the relay. I had it hooked up to this top mega fuse, which goes to the alternator. The bottom one goes to the starter and then everything goes through the big switch before it goes into the battery. This runs all the way over here to this single relay. We need to put two relays here instead of one, so we'll have one relay per fan. To give you an idea of how much a heat soak starter and how much amperage it draws because the resistance is so high, this was a fully charged battery the other day. So we're gonna let that charge up while we do our work. Anytime I put something up on jack stands, give it a good safety shake. If it doesn't move, good to go. If it wiggles or moves, reset your setup. For a starter on a big block Chevy, it's on the passenger side, back corner, let me take you down. While I'm down here, let me give you a warning. This is one of the original starters or one of the OEM reproduction ones. It's, you know, about that much longer. They're really, really, really heavy. And the second you take those cables off and those two bolts out, the only thing between it and the ground is your noggin. It will hurt really bad. Be careful when taking these out. You're not ready for this. Powermaster Ultra Starter. So, no joke. Three point. Two point five kilowatts. Which is like three something horsepower. I'll put the real number down here after I do the conversion. But I think I'm turning this thing to a hybrid. If this thing was a manual, we could propel the truck with this. Let's see what's the fresh out the summit box. I haven't even been into it yet. Ooh. Instructions. Yeah, we'll actually read these because I have a feeling they're kind of important. Ooh, it came with bolts. Bolts and shims, some washers. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> the branding. All right. Now look at the meat on this thing. Side by side. They're not actually too dissimilar. A little different bolt pattern, but I think that'll be okay because the block has the provisions for that. And this thing has the ability to be clocked at different angles. So if we need to clear the header more or anything like that, this one's adjustable. Man, golly. Ultra torque. They are a little bit different. Obviously the bolt pattern on this one was the staggered, this one's straight, that's okay, there's two holes in the block. But what I need to pay attention to is it's got the big lug for the positive battery cable and then this is the basically the wire to say engage the starter. There's two small wires on this one, only one small wire on this one. So we're gonna have to figure out what to do with that and it's called a diode. It's in this bag right here and I'll show you all about that in a bit. 
I promise I will do my homework and read the instructions, but I got distracted by the starter dyno sheet. This came with a dyno to show exactly what it did, what it pulled. I like this. Somebody did some quality check on their product. So the only other PowerMaster product I have is I do have one of their one wire alternators and it came with a dyno sheet too. And I've had no problems out of that thing. I even had it on the 396. Good job, PowerMaster. I'm impressed by that. Ultra torque with homework. Okay, back to homework. Just discovered something. I'm gonna have to change my setup. See where this says max current, 690 amps? Very important. On my setup, the way it's currently configured is I have the main battery and then I have the main cutoff switch. But back behind here, I have two AMG fuses. One's a 150 that goes over to the alternator and the 250 that goes down to the starter. Those were there in case we ever got in an accident. We didn't weld anything, make a fire, or make a bad situation worse. We're gonna omit the 250, and that's okay because the only other accessory that comes off of there is the main power feed that goes into the harness inside the truck, and everything in there is fused. So that was really just there for this mini torque starter. And since this one will pop that like it's a piece of popcorn, we're gonna omit it and make a brand new battery cable. And I'll show you how to go from raw wire to a really heavy duty cable. So that's gonna get included in this too. It's a new day, might actually get the bolted on. I've got some dimensions I need to go check when I get this thing bolted on and then we'll work on the battery cable a little bit after that. So we'll start with getting it bolted on the block and go from there. Because the starter grounds through a block, this has to be completely clean. So I've gone through here with a wire brush and that should be enough contact surface for the negative pixies to go into the block and back to the battery and ground. Something that happened. Notice how that, if it tries to kick out, it's not gonna work right there. Yeah, I need to scoot that over to those other bolt holes. So, redo. All right, if you notice, there's not a lot of room between the header and the starter. We're gonna take this back off, make an adjustment, and see if we can have a better fit in here, so that way this thing is not ready to be cooked so much by this guy. You saw when we were under the truck, that if we install this right now the way that it is, it's gonna be right up against that header. But we got a party piece. We can clock this thing in a different position and give us a little bit more clearance away from the header and help keep this thing alive a lot longer and less cooked. So let's get at it. Before I slam this thing back together and clock it over one notch, look at the niceness in here. This is a machined part. It is made with just the shim. And if you ever want to see like mechanical action here, even that shaft is splined on the inside in there. This is a really heavy duty unit. I'm pretty stoked. After clocking, there's a little bit more air in here. Now, I need to do some measuring here to make sure there's a 16th here, and then I need to figure out how to get that to stick out and I can measure how much the teeth engagement is and make sure it's right. It's a new day. I got the wires out of here, and I'll show you kind of what we got to do next. So this is what I removed. This is the wire going over to the kill switch. This is the wire that went down to the starter. We need to make a new one of these and I'll show you how we go from some raw welding wire to some really nice battery cables. So let's get started. Because we're not using normal wire, we've got to use some big eyelets, some serious ways to cut the wire because this stuff is thick. Like if you can't tell, it's as thick around as my finger. 
We got a way to crimp that in onto the wire. You can do it with one of these little guys, which are pretty inexpensive and a hammer, works really well. You can use a vise, crank it down, squish it tight, or you can use this hydraulic one and really make pretty crimps. This is what we're gonna use. Now that we got it in here, all the little strands are in, we'll give it a few pumps, and then this will be there, and ready to go. And just like that, back it off, and we have these really nice crimps, and there's no way I can mechanically yank that off of there. Next. This is our raw new battery cable. I need to put some heat shrink on to seal these ends up and then we'll put a covering on it and then it'll be ready to go on the truck. Because these are positive cables, I'm gonna use red heat shrink on the ends so that way it's always like, hey, this is hot. This might hurt you, you fool. Red, danger, you know, common. And here's a look at the final product before we put it on the truck. 90 degree will go down on the starter, the straight one will go on the kill switch, and this will be ready for service. Update on the relay situation. We are no longer just one. We have two relays, and we might do something else to clean up the two fuses. But over here, on the other side, there's two relays tucked up in there. One for each one of those fans. And they work great. Final look, all the wires are hooked up. We'll leave the inspection panel off. Let's crank it up and see if it works. If I've done everything I'm supposed to do, when I turn this on, no bad fire smells or noises. Okay. Good sign. Let's see how fast this thing cranks over. Or it rips all the teeth off the flex plate. Here we go. Wow. Hold on. Let's give it some. All right, we ready? Here we go. Okay, that lights off really fast. Down inspecting afterwards, we still have all the teeth on the flex plate. Good signs. It looked like it was coming in and out on the Bendix like it should. I'm gonna call that a success. Let's listen to how different it starts. Old school mini torque. We have a working temp gauge. So before we take all this apart and do the intake, let's go test that sending unit because I got another sending unit. Let's change it out. So to change out the sending unit, I need to drain the coolant down below that level, so we're gonna fill up the bucket with the siphon again. A few minutes, we'll be able to swap that out, put some Permatex on it, high temp stuff, and we'll see if this works. And even though this intake is leaking, we can verify this is good and then move it over to the new intake when it comes in. For this, Permatex, thread sealant, high temperature. Sending unit. It's been swapped out. I know we haven't changed the intake, but we're gonna test this because we can go around the block. 
Because, I mean, I do want to hear it run, because, you know, 540 noises. So, let's go test that. Something really cool. We have a temperature gauge moving. The fans kicked on and it dropped the temperature right away. Couple of things off the list. The sending unit, right in the trash. Wow, this thing's really hot. Let me show you what happened to the grub screw because I don't think I got a good video of it before. So the grub screw down in there. This is like doing a filling. Everything's hot because we went around the block just to do it. Let's see how there's coolant just all around it. That intake can't stay on there. We'll work on that. Thank you guys for coming along. Starter's in, it works, it fires right up. Next time, we're gonna get into this intake. We're gonna undo a lot of the things we've already done. The FedEx man did drop me off something pretty awesome. We have another Edelbrock intake. Hopefully this one isn't, you know, broke. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. If this is the same result, you'll know. I have to say, thank you all for watching. I know you guys have been enjoying the content. I'm enjoying getting it done. There's gonna be a little bit of a gap here, but this should come out, I think, for Thanksgiving. So if you're seeing this on Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. If you're seeing it past Thanksgiving, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you had a good day and we will see you in the next one. I'm Gorm, I'm out.